Live from the Alta California, Mark Flores presents the Pay-Per-View Wrestling Podcast. Today's topic is No Mercy 2016 predictions, plus Brock vs. Goldberg at Survivor Series. We go all tack all these subjects here on the Pay-Per-View Wrestling Podcast. Now here's your host, Mark Flores. Hello everyone, thank you guys for tuning in to the Pay-Per-View Wrestling Podcast where I tackle No Mercy 2016, predictions, insight, what have you, on SmackDown Live's second pay-per-view of the Draft 2.0. Let's see what happens with No Mercy 2016. There's going to be four championships on the line. There's finally, as we see these uh, pay-per-views come along, there's a must-see card for those on the side of SmackDown over Monday Night Raw. This is a great SmackDown card to have. You actually have AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, and John Cena in a fatal three-way. And you also have another interesting stipulation. You have career versus title. You have The Miz facing Dolph Ziggler. Will this be the final match of Dolph Ziggler's career? Who's bound to put on a classic match? Let's find all that out when we break down the matches for No Mercy 2016. But first and foremost, let me make sure to give my get the commercials out of the way first. Hello, this is Mark Flores from the Mark F Podcast channel here to let you know that this podcast episode is brought to you by Game Swappers. Come on down to Game Swappers, located at 4520 Holt Boulevard in Montclair, California, to buy, sell, and trade your current and retro video games from Nintendo Entertainment System to the PS4. Keep in mind that if you share any one of my podcast episodes through any form of social media, you'll get 10% off your entire purchase, or you'll get 10% more towards your retro game trade-ins. Follow Game Swappers on Instagram at G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. That's G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. Game Swappers. Buy, sell, and trade. Perfect. Now, so we'll go into the... What more than likely will be the pre-show match? You have Jack Swagger versus Baron Corbin. This kind, this match was abruptly started a couple weeks ago uh, with Baron Corbin doing his usual like I'm a heel bully type of guy, and Jack Swagger barely coming on to SmackDown not not too long ago, and now he's going to be the guy to take on Baron Corbin. This match should be easy to predict in the eyes of any wrestling fan. You have the younger, more, there's more, a lot more, um, I would say there's a lot more going for Baron Corbin at the moment. So what we can honestly assume is that Jack Swagger is going to lose to Baron Corbin on the, in the pre-show simply because Baron Corbin needs a lot of momentum. It's kind of reminiscent of what Nia Jax and Alicia Fox had to do in that situation where the lower tier mid card person had to go, uh, had to lose to the up and coming, uh, the up and coming superstar. Same situation. The good thing about this is that both of them are roughly the same size. So this is going to be something I, I would enjoy to see. It's not like you're going to see an obvious mis- mis- uh, mismatch like when you had Baron Corbin go up against uh, several shorter superstars. Not really big on this match because I'm not really that that much of a fan of Baron Corbin as of now. He's kind of grown over on me just because he can. He actually looks menacing. He actually seems menacing via promo. Jack Swagger, when he's a baby face, he's actually pretty impressive to see. I mean, he's always putting it. You can always tell he's putting 100% on the line every time. That's something to appreciate, and that's something to take home as well. But unfortunately, with Baron Corbin being the younger of the two and the more, the one with more uh, promise. I'm going to have to have Baron Corbin win this match over Jack Swagger. The next match we have is the one that I really wanted to put a lot of emphasis on here is the Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. Career versus title match. Now, the Miz and Dolph are doing a very impressive job putting on a build-up leading up to this match that has serious implications. There's a lot going on right now. This title versus career match, they only put them on for something as real as this. Take uh, Ric Flair versus HBK at at, uh, WrestleMania. Take Macho Man versus Ultimate Warrior in a career match. Um, A lot going on there. The match between the two should be very methodical. Dolph's cadence should be slow-paced. Should 
They should capitalize on the fact that he shouldn't make any mistakes going forward in the match. Um, both The Miz and Dolph will have the same amount of intensity, I believe, despite different things being at, at stake. To, to both of them, they, you could look at the respect of a career versus the title being in the same type of prestige as the two. The Miz is honestly putting a lot of emphasis on his title run, and the Miz, I'm actually, the Miz is actually putting a lot of emphasis on his title run, and Dolph is putting a lot of emphasis on keeping his career going with the Intercontinental title. With that being said, I strongly believe that Dolph Ziggler won't beat the Miz. As I've mentioned before, I don't think the Miz is going to lose the title anytime soon. There's several shoot interviews where Dolph said he would be hanging it up in 2016. And as much as I'd love to see Dolph Ziggler stay, it's just going to be good to see him go. And I say that because there's a lot more potential for Dolph Ziggler outside of WWE now as there was in. Booking hasn't been his most favorable sidekick. You know, they've they really have misplaced him as far as booking goes, in my opinion. There's there's always a lot of talk of, as as if Dolph Ziggler's the next Shawn Michaels, but due to the fact where his age is at and the pace that Shawn Michaels had per his age as well, at that point in his career, it's really he'd have to go on a, a super intense run, but more than likely that wouldn't happen at all. It's been a crazy roller coaster ride with Dolph, and he's just been on the receiving end of several bad booking options to me. Um, but what we have here, as far as the Miz versus Dolph Ziggler, the Miz is going to lose this title to someone way more impactful than Dolph Ziggler is. Dolph Ziggler shouldn't be focusing on the world title and then get shot down a mid card title that quickly. I think that the the Miz is going to go over on Dolph. The Miz wins clean. Once again, it'll take a major situation to have Miz lose that Intercontinental title first and foremost. And you have to believe that because the way Miz presents the title, the way they creative wants him to present the title, you see it. You see a lot of passion in the fact that he remembers the days of his of his um, of his title run. Once you put a lot of emphasis on that, having the days situated like that makes good for awesome promos to when he actually has it. He actually has his title in like the day of 300, you know, once it goes on to those type of uh, moments, then a major change will happen where someone that creative believes can get put over by a major title change will take the title. The next thing we have on the docket here is the WWE Tag Team Championship. Rhino and Heath Slater versus the, Us the Usos. Both tag teams are putting on great programs with their respective positions. You have the Usos becoming great heels, taking their paint off, dressing all black. This is a good look for them. And then you have the ultimate baby faces for now. You have Heath Slater and Rhino. The Usos and Heath specifically have had their careers revitalized. And it's really good to see them placed in this situation. I just want to bring that out to the table here. With Rhino and Heath Slater, it's like the odd couple met up and they actually made and produced a great match. Great matches between the Usos and Zack Ryder and uh, whoever else they were facing in the tag team tournament as well. There is a bigger and better program that will be more entertaining than Heath and Rhino versus the Usos. And I'll tell you this right now, it's going to be Rhino versus Slater. So you have American Alpha creeping up, coming back to the tag team situation. So if the Usos win, they can move on to a program with American Alpha, which in my opinion would be a better program for the Usos to face the ultimate baby faces in American Alpha for now. You take whatever happens in the ring at No Mercy where Heath Slater gets turned on by Rhino to set up a feud with them, a singles feud, and then you have the Usos take, it on, uh, take on the tag team titles and actually take a program with American Alpha. Heath will cost, what I can predict is Heath is going to cost cost the match, causing Rhino to turn heel and start a solo feud with Heath. The Usos I have winning this title match because the way everything's aligned right now where American Alpha hasn't been back yet, but now that you see them slowly bring up the program with them, it's going to go like this. It'll be beneficial to both parties, once again, I'll, I'll mention, is that if Heath and Rhino go on a solo t uh, on a solo run together in a feud, 
facing each other, the bickering and stuff. You know, Heath is going to come up with some crazy, crazy dialogue between the two. Like, oh, we used to be brothers. What are you doing, Rhino? It's going to be fun like that. I, I think that these two people, um, you know, the whole tag team split up and facing uh, facing one another is always good stuff. And I know that for sure that Heath Slater can put on a gr- good program with Rhino. Now, the Usos, on the other hand, if they actually win the title at No Mercy 2016, they take the titles, they go on a little run, jobbing, I mean, I'll have a couple of uh, squash matches with the titles, retaining them, but then American Alpha comes up. American Alpha, then they actually build a program between the two to settle it at the next pay-per-view. So, what I have predicted, hopefully that this actually comes into fruition here, is that the Usos win the title at No Mercy 2016. With good stipulations happening after the fact, you know it's 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 beneficial for both parties at the end of the day, and I hope that it actually will happen. The next match we have is the one that really some people might care about. I don't know, but and it sucks because I mentioned the names of Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. This feud hasn't had my full attention because both as of right now, are stagnant. And you can easily tell they're not trying to make it happen. I know that, you know, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of momentum going for these guys simply because of the fact that there's no title on the line. It's just a random feud between the two. The good thing though is that both know how to put on a good physical and theatrical match. Both know ring psychology like nobody's business. So if you add that up to this match with both of the best doing it right now as far as promos, as far as ring psychology, it should be an enjoyable match. Had it been some other duo, who knows what it would have really happened. You know, who knows what will happen at No Mercy. In terms of momentum, I can only see that Randy Orton takes this W. Randy Orton is going to be the only one to win this because, unfortunately, like the, the, the machine keeps running. And I say that because Bray Wyatt... You have a lot of potential with the guy. But the fact of the matter is, is he gets injured a lot. You can't have all your chips and you can't have, you know, you can't have all your chips on a guy that gets injured really, really, uh, really on a regular basis. You can, de- you can depend on Randy Orton because he gets injured from time to time, but it's not really the length of time you get, he gets injured isn't really sick that often. So what we have here is Randy Orton is going to take the W against Bray Wyatt simply because there's a lot more going for Randy at this moment for Randy to build up to go back to the upper card in the SmackDown uh, with SmackDown itself. And now with Bray Wyatt, the best thing about Bray Wyatt is that with any promo, with any with any feud, he does it to 100% of his ability. And he's always able to cut a great promo and totally believe in himself and convince the audience that he's actually the man he claims to be. That's the best thing about Bray Wyatt. And if you have a good promo, you're always going to be relevant. You're always going to be needed. You could get a guy that doesn't do a good promo but does a great match, but what happens with the buildup? You'll lose out of the buildup. You have a guy that actually does a good promo and doesn't do shit in the ring. You just have a good talker. Then that's just managerial. That's just a good manager. But with Bray Wyatt, you actually have the best of both worlds. He can put on a great match. He can actually talk on the mic. And he actually can convince you of the story that he's trying to say via the promo. Randy Orton takes this over Bray Wyatt. And that's it. And that's all we have for that one. I, I really, I, I know this one was uh, not. There was not a lot, a lot being said for this one, but I wanted to make sure to get this one out of the way and you know emphasize that these guys do know what they're doing in the ring. These guys do know what they're doing via promo, but with no real, you know, these guys are major league wrestlers here. Like, I mean, these guys need titles. These guys need certain stipulations to 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 bring this this budding feud to a to a to a cease. But they don't. So let's just see what happens here at No Mercy 2016. Let's see if someone runs in. But as of right now, I have Randy Orton taking the W over over Bray Wyatt. <laughs> Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss. 
Now, allow me to get this out of my system first and foremost. Alexa Bliss has the potential to be one of the hottest heels of the last decade. And I see nothing but potential. And it's amazing to see. She's taken her limitations of being short and actually put an emphasis on that. And actually added some moves within her moveset that actually emphasize the fact that she's shorter than the rest of the wrestlers. The rest of the female talent. It's impressive to see she actually gets tons of heat before she comes into the ring. She actually can uh, talk a good game as well. And that's like what a lot of the women wrestlers lack nowadays is cutting a good promo. But she's one of the best out of the bunch. And I'm glad that WWE actually kind of booked her on this type of match where she has the potential to win it. But realistically, we can all see this. And, uh, and as I go into the uh, the analysis here, <clears throat> you'll definitely see why. But I wanted to get that out of the way that Alexa Bliss is definitely one of the... She has the potential to be one of the best heels of the last decade. The One of the best female heels. With that being said, it's not the right time for Alexa Bliss to hoist up the title just yet. And we can see that. You know, it's just one of those situations where... Becky Lynch is one of the best female workers wrestling in the WWE today. Her moveset is unique to only her and her alone. It's very obvious to see that she will hold the title for a little bit longer. There's going to be a lot of... I I know there's going to be a title change soon, but it's just not going to be right after a pay-per-view soon. When I imagine the two in the ring pitted against each other, I can safely assume that Becky and Alexa would have a good match but with immense immense talent within Becky Lynch herself it's hard to see that Alexa is going to pull something off like an upset but I'm still very excited to see this match I'm more excited to see it than Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton because I really want to see what happens like this is Alexa Bliss's solo shot into a major pay-per-view at No Mercy 2016 so this is going to be a lot of emphasis there's going to be a lot of microscopes under this match so let's hope Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch actually put on a good program for us to see at No Mercy 2016. But for my prediction right now, I think Becky retains the title. She wins clean over Alexa Bliss. After that, we have the next women's match. We have Nikki Bella versus Carmella. The <sighs> Carmella versus Nikki Bella. We have these. The last few weeks, Nikki has been pinned by Carmella way too many times to count. But with Carmella and Nikki coming together and Nikki just coming off of her little recent absence, it's I can safely assume that Nikki Bella is going to win against Carmella. And the only reason why is that Carmella has been taking a couple W's over Nikki Bella. Now, what we can see here is that Carmella is in the same shoes of Alexa Bliss, that she can be a great heel, she can be a good face. That's the best thing about her tweener attitude is that she can do both. But when she's, the only problem I have with Carmella is when her identity gets, there's a misconception of her identity whether she's a heel or a face. Because when she's a heel, as she is now, she still kind of dances to the crowd and still tries to be all giddy, but you know... A true heel would know what to do in that situation, and a true babyface would know what to do in every appropriate situation. So, with that being said, Nikki and Carmella, with both of their limited movesets, you can expect a match to see, but I don't really think it's going to live up to the potential of like a Becky Lynch and Alexa Bliss. I know both her and Nikki and Carmella don't really, I mean, they're not really good wrestlers in the terms of you know when you look in the perspective of other female wrestlers like Becky Lynch, Naomi, Natalia, Sasha Banks. I mean it just doesn't they just don't add up. Let's hope they could do what they let's hope they can actually do what's do what's best for the moment, actually put a good program with their both they can actually put both of their skill sets in order. Um I have hope for that. A little bit of hope. I don't really have much. Especially when it comes to Carmella and Nikki Bella. The next match that we have is AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose and John Cena. So, all three all three of these guys have, have faced each other in separate matches before. With that being said, I don't expect anything less than a great match between the three. I personally saw them at a, at a live match on Sunday, this Sunday. 
um, this last Sunday, and they were able to keep the action fast and great. Uh, they were able, able to keep the action fast, but like a great three-way match, not one person felt more left out than the other. And that has how you do a great three-way match. And in terms of who might be winning the contest, I think that AJ will have the belt on his waist for a long time. I don't think he's a placeholder champ like Dean Ambrose was. I think it's going to have an intense rivalry for AJ to lose it. It's going to take a very intense rivalry for him to lose it. And he'll definitely lose it to Cena at a pay-per-view down the line, but at no mercy, but at no mercy it's not going to happen. This might build up another feud with John Cena and AJ Styles before John Cena leaves to do American Grit. So I have AJ Styles retaining the title. The best thing about all three of these guys is that all three of these guys are actual former champs. They know what it takes to actually put on a great match. And for me seeing it myself personally on a Sunday live event, I know that they're trying to get all these... um, They're trying to... How would you say? They're trying to iron out the kinks between the three to put on a great match because you know that's how you you're able to wrestle these mat you're able to wrestle on live events to try to work out a program so it can be done better on the stage such as no mercy i think all three can put on a great match all three together and i know i'm going to see very intense spots between the three and i know for a fact that aj styles is going to find some way to, to be his typical heel that he is now which he's doing a great job of being a heel he'll find his way to retain the title so here are my predictions for no mercy once again i have the miz over dolph ziggler the usos over heath and rhino orton over bray and nikki bella over carmella becky lynch over alexa bliss baron corbin over jack swagger and then AJ Styles over John Cena and Dean Ambrose. It's going to be one of those it's going to be one of those pay-per-views where it's going to be a very semi-stacked card with a lot of implications on the line, so it's going to get you to actually tune in on on Sunday when it comes around. No Mercy 2016. I'm I'm really excited for it. Now, from what I've got on the, on the line a couple days ago, I have actually got word that Goldberg and Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series is pretty much confirmed. But the questions I have is will Bill Goldberg be healthy enough for a match against Brock Lesnar. He stated in several interviews earlier this this year that he actually went under under he actually underwent knee surgery. So if he can still go, it's actually realistic for Bill Goldberg to actually be able to go because he keeps himself in the shape. He doesn't keep himself in the certain shape that he was a decade, almost a decade and a half ago, but he's still in shape. And I just want to tell you guys one thing about the previous match that Bill Goldberg and Brock Lesnar had. And the reason that people didn't enjoy the match at WrestleMania 20 was because of the backstory behind it. Brock Lesnar was leaving to the Minnesota Vikings to try out for the NFL. Bill Goldberg was leaving on the end of a one-year contract. Everyone knew it. So, with that being said, it became one of these instances where, oh, I don't want to watch this match because they're both going to leave. So, people will have to come with a certain... Leave the leave the attitude of everything behind backstage back there. Come with, to an event like WrestleMania, come with the, the whole, oh yeah, look, at, let's watch this match for what it is. That no one was able to do it. The fans stole the show at WrestleMania 20. And it really wasn't at the fault of either guy. Because either guy was still able to wrestle. There was no diminish in talent. There was no, oh, this guy's a replacement for this other guy who was supposed to headline WrestleMania with Brock. Or, you know, oh, Brock didn't show up. You know, there wasn't any, like, major thing going on. It's like, oh, both guys are leaving after this. Like, okay, who cares? Just watch the match and enjoy it. But, no. People were actually stealing, steal, the whole audience stole all the prestige out of that show. And with that, with the tarnished show like that, thus came the whole reputation of the match at WrestleMania 20 wasn't good to watch. So with this match at Survivor Series pretty much being lined up for Brock and Bill Goldberg, let's hope that they WWE can actually put on some program to lead up to ensure that something can actually happen between the, between the two sometime later on, a little later. It might be a one-off deal, but hopefully it's just for the better. 
with Bill Goldberg being on uh, being as a, a downloadable player in WWE 2K17 and Brock Lesnar being on the cover of WWE 2K17, um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot, a lot of advertisement. And then you throw in the fact that they're always on ESPN from one time or another. I think this rematch has the potential to heal those old wounds and we're able to hit the restart button on this actual ma- uh, on this actual rivalry come come survivor series and i'm curious to see what unfolds and i'm thinking and i'm also thinking this kurt hawkins and i wanted to leave this for the last part is kurt hawkins is actually going to be wrestling somebody uh at no mercy 2016 his actual debut what i'm thinking and hear me out here is that bill goldberg is going to come out and face kurt hawkins and completely obliterate him and i'm calling it right now Say what you know. Say I'm crazy or whatever, but I, I really do think so because they have been building up Kurt Hawkins to wrestle all the way up to No Mercy. Now, why build up a guy who is pretty much mid card potential all the way up to No Mercy for you to see who he's going to face? Why would WWE do that? And why would WWE have this hidden agenda where Goldberg? is actually going to face Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series, but no one's going to really confirm it. All right, let's see what happens. I I really honestly predict that Kurt Hawkins is going to be be surprised by Bill Goldberg at No Mercy 2016, and I'm calling it now. All right, guys, well, there goes No Mercy 2016's predictions and, and insight and my two cents on the Bill Goldberg and Brock Lesnar situation. But thank you guys for tuning in. I want to actually thank my proud sponsor, Game Swappers, for sponsoring the show. Other than that, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you guys at No Mercy 2016, and I'll follow up with the podcast on the review and analysis of No Mercy 2016. This has been the Pay-Per-View Wrestling Podcast.